Okay, good morning. Let's uh, paint some code. Um, my name is James, as you can see. Um, I'm from Perth. Yay, Perth. Actually, I'm from New Zealand, but I'm, I'm from Perth more recently than that. Um, yay, New Zealand. Um, so, uh, like most of you, I, I make apps. And, uh, of course, like all of you who make apps, my apps uh, have images in them, right? They have icons and uh, buttons and all sorts of interface graphics. But possibly unlike... Um, most of you, um, increasingly more and more of the graphics in my apps are not actual graphics. They're not actual static image files. They are generated in uh, core graphics code with the help of a clever uh, Mac app called Paint Code. Um, Paint Code is made by some guys uh, at a company called Pixel Cut based in Bratislava, of all places, in, uh, in Slovakia. Uh, and I'm not affiliated with them at all. Um, I just happen to really like their app. But I did actually get in touch with them uh, to tell them I was doing this presentation, and they were super excited. And they have given me a free copy of Paint Code to give away. So that is, it's, a, it's like a $100 app, so that's a really good uh, prize. So remind me, uh, if I haven't done so by the end, uh, I'm going to ask a question, so pay attention, and you might win uh, that, that app. Um, I don't actually have any slides today. Uh, it is demo all the way down. You, you might be thinking, well, you've, you've got one slide, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> I do not have one slide. I actually decided, well, if I'm not going to have any slides, I do have to do this sort of introductory slide that everyone's doing. So <laughs> I thought, well, let's, let's paint the code. Um, I did not support uh, uh, orientation change, <laughs> as you can see. That's all right. I drew that in paint code. And uh, in case you don't believe me, this is what it looks like. It looks like this, and this, and some of this, <laughs> and some of this, and some of this, and finally a little bit of, uh, of this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in fairness, most of that code is actually, uh, it's actually the RMIT uh, logo. Um, <laughs> So there's a lot of Bezier paths in, in, in that, right? One for each letter. And, you know, if you wanted to try and be efficient, you could actually use real text for that, but you don't want to mess around with people's logos, of course. So, so those are all Bezier paths, as are those. Uh, but the text actually is all real text. Um, but this is stupid. You, you wouldn't use paint code to do this. Um, I'm just <laughs> being a dick. Um, but let's, let's have a look and see what um, you really should be doing with paint code. Let me just scale that back down again. Maybe something like that. Okay. Um, so let's get rid of that monstrosity. And, and I'll show you paint code. So we have a new document here. This is what paint code looks like. Does anyone use paint code? Oh, wow. 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 That's cool. More than I expected, actually. Um, so if you have used any vector editing um, software, then you should be familiar with what you can see here. You've got some tools, some shapes. You've got a pen tool for drawing uh, paths and uh, Bezier curves. You've got uh, ordering. Uh, you've got grouping, colors, gradients, shadows. Um, but, of course, the one thing that you've got that you don't have in the average um, vector editing tool is this pane down here. This is the, the code pane, and this is where the magic happens. So let's... Uh, oops. I'm just going to resize this canvas, and let's draw a shape and see what happens. So you will see that as I'm drawing, I'm getting code down the bottom. And you can change the code that you get. If you are someone who likes Swift, you can change to Swift. Uh, however, if you are someone who likes Swift, then uh, you are not going to be seeing very much of it today. <laughs> Otherwise, this demo would not be very Swift. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm, I'm a... I'm a, I'm a designer. I have enough, job, uh, enough of a job keeping up to date with hipster design trends without having to keep up with hipster programming languages. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, but you can change that. I'll just run back into the loving um, arms of Objective-C. I love you so much. Um, and uh, you can ch if you're still supporting iOS 6, you can, you can do that. If you, for some reason, are still retaining and releasing, you can do that. And if you are on, uh, if you're doing a Mac app, you can uh, 
you can flip the origin, right? Because the origin point of views are the other way around, right? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we will leave those settings like that. Um, so as you see, if we change some of the, um, the settings on the shape, the code redraws live as we do it. And that's really cool. Uh, quite aside from the advantages of using paint code in your apps, it's actually a really good way to learn core graphics. In fact, everything I know about core graphics I've learned from just playing around here and seeing what happens. Um, so let's make this uh, just a normal star. And uh, let's change the fill color. So at the moment, you can see that we're just filling it with UI color gray color. Um, and all of these colors here are, you know, that's UI color red color, UI color green color. Um, but we're going to add a new color. I'll call it icon color. And uh, let's make it um, blue. So how do you use this code in your app? There are actually lots of ways to use paint code code uh, in your apps, uh, ranging from really simple copy and paste methods to more sort of, um, I guess, sort of continuously integrated ways where paint code becomes more of an integral part of your, an integrated part of your, uh, of your workflow. So I'm going to start with the simplest ways, and then I'm going to show you some more complex ways later on. So the easiest way is to just copy that code and paste it into the, uh, into a custom uh, subclass of UI view. So I've created one of those. I've got a UI view called star view. Uh, yeah, it's just a subclass of UI view. And as you will know, um, if you do that, you'll know you get this method here called draw rect with a big ugly warning saying don't leave it empty. It's okay, we will not leave it empty. And you just need to paste your code right into that. So now, uh, anywhere you want that, you obviously will just create. Whoa. Let's, <laughs> let's not do that. Um, that was the demo gods. Um, so um, create your view, and, and, and when it draws itself, uh, it should simply draw that, uh, that drawing code into itself. So we get a, a star, just like we expected. Now, we have done, obviously, almost nothing. This is the simplest way you could possibly use paint code. But already, we have gained one immediate advantage, and it's a huge advantage, in that we are completely resolution independent. So we could run this code on a 1x screen, 2x screen, or a 3x screen, and we'll get beautiful, crisp graphic. It's great. But there are so many more advantages. And, uh, and the next one is that we are well on our way now to not just being resolution independent, but also being size independent. So um, you know, this, this view might be something I use in multiple places throughout my app. And it might be in different sizes. And if I was handling this with uh, static image files, I would need to have 1x, 2x, 3x versions at whatever size I wanted to run it at. Or perhaps I might just have the largest one and scale it down. Then I worry about performance. Or, um, but I can handle that really easily. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's make, let's double the size of it. And I'm just going to uh, color in the view so we can see exactly what's happening. So let's have a look at our uh, double size star. Oh, we don't have a double size star. We have the same star. And of course, the, the reason is we have, we've changed the size of the view, but we've done nothing to modify the actual drawing code, right? So our code still expects, this is just a Bezier path with you know, points that determine where the points of that star is, and it still expects to be 100, roughly 100 points by 100 points. So we need a way to dynamically modify these points in relation to the, the frame that it's being drawn into. Unfortunately, paint code makes that really easy. Um, so we have a thing here called, uh, called frames. And as you can see from the tooltip, uh, shapes inside of frames can define custom resizing behavior. So that sounds like what we want. Let's draw one of those. Now, you will see that when I did that, the first thing that happened is that instead of having just raw drawing code down here, it's now wrapped up that code into a method that takes a frame as a parameter. And it's now using that frame to modify all of those control points for the Bezier path. And I can define the way that the shape interacts with that frame by changing these controls, basically springs and struts. So as I turn these on and off, you'll see that it is interacting with the frame in different ways. Um, now, I should say that this is a very simple shape. It's one Bezier path. And most of your graphics will probably not be. They'll be complex compound shapes made of different shapes. Um, 
a little, uh, so if you have a complex shape, you'll find you actually have more controls. There are outside ones. And, um, but a piece of advice, if you do have a complex compound shape, uh, group it. Uh, into one group and then set the constraints onto the group. If you try and set them onto individual shapes, you'll get behavior you don't expect with things moving in, in various places. However, of course, that might be something you want. You might want to move things independently of other things. And you can have more than one frame on a canvas. Uh, so you could have a frame that only interacts with one part of your shape. Uh, one great example of that is, uh, say, a speech bubble. Uh, you might have one frame that is just around the little call out piece. So the main it's rect, round rect, or oval of your speech bubble, that scales up to whatever size, but your little call-out stays the same size and at the same place. You can do that. Um, but we'll just keep it simple with one frame. Um, and I'm just going to rename this uh, canvas to something sensible like uh, star icon. Okay. So, uh, again, we can just copy that code, and we can paste it into our UI view subclass. And now in my draw rec method, instead of this drawing code, I'm just going to call that method. So I'm going to call self, uh, what was it? Da, 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 draw star icon with frame, and I'll pass in self dot bounds, not frame. If you pass in the frame, you'll get offset image, of course. Um, and so now, if I build and run this, I should get the star that I expected, larger star. So we are now resolution independent and we are size independent. We can make that any size we want and we get a nice crisp graphic on any screen. Um, but wait, there's more. Um, of course, now because we are drawing this programmatically, we have access to any of the properties of the shape that we're drawing. Now, of course, this is a very simple shape. It's one Bezier path and a color. So there's not much to play with here, but I'm sure you can imagine the possibilities. So well, let's play with color. So let's say that this view is some kind of favorite indicator, and we want to be able to indicate whether the favorite is turned off or on. So we want to modify this color um, dynamically. So we might create a, uh, a custom. Didn't I just turn the sound off? HDMI. It's a what? HDMI. Ah, right. Because uh, oh well, you'll live with that. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's, let's have the, that's a nice little pop. It'll be a little ongoing joke throughout the year. <laughs> um, so I've, I've created a, a custom init method that takes a, a Boolean to say whether we are favorite or not. Um, obviously, we'll need um, some, uh, some properties here. Wait for it. Um, so I'm going to pass in a favorite. And uh, so now, when I decide my color here, I'm simply going to ask, are we a favorite? If so, then let's be UI color red color. And if not, let's be UI color gray color. All right, so I'm not even going to run that. I'm sure you can see what's going to happen there, right? If I, uh, instead of just uh, using the, the standard init method, I'm going to use this one, pass in the favorite or not a favorite, and I'll get a red star or a gray star. Um, so, so far, this has all been drawing this paint code into a custom UI view subclass. And that's definitely the easiest way and um, quite possibly the most performant way, depending on what you're doing. But to be honest, I don't do it a lot because, well, it just I don't like to have my app filled up with dozens of you know, little classes just for an icon or something. I, I use this a lot for a lot of images, so I don't really want to have lots and lots of classes. I'll do this if... Um, I have a special view that has a lot of properties and there's a lot of computation happening in it or I reuse it a lot and it makes sense. But for just images, I tend more often uh, to use image methods and just create UI images when I need them. So I tend to have something called an image factory or image provider, icon provider, something like that. And all I need to do there is to wrap up that drawing code into image methods. So they would look something like this. We would have... Um, we're going to return a UI image. We're going to take the same parameters we were just talking about. We're going to take a frame and a, and a Boolean for favorite. Um, we are going to create a, a UI graphics image context. And if you've ever done that, you'll know it takes three um, parameters. We need a size for the image, which, of course, is going to be that frame.size. Uh, is it opaque or not? In this case, no. And the scale factor. In most cases, you'll want to set that to zero because uh, that means that it takes the scale factor of the device it's being run on. So 1x, 2x, 3x, it'll just create the correct graphic. 
then after we've drawn our code, we'll just uh, we'll pull an image out of that context and return it. So all we need to do is just put our drawing code in to there. Like so. And of course, we are. Um, this is a class method we're working with here, so um, that's all right because we're passing in favorite. We'll just talk to it directly. So now if I put this method into my header, I now can access that image anywhere in my app where I want it just by, by calling that. So I could just, for instance, draw a UI image view here and just draw it into that. But let's be a bit more ambitious. Let's, uh, oops, let's create a, a button. Um, so I've just got pretty standard button creation code here, a little bit of basic styling. Um, and down here, I want an on image and an on off image, right? An on image for when it's selected uh, or not selected. So all I need to do, uh, did I import it? Yep. All I need to do is say this is going to be image factory um, star icon with frame. And I've created this, uh, this image frame here. Favorite, yes. And then my off image, of course, is going to be the same thing. But favorite, no. All right, so this is a button, so we need a, a method for. Uh, all right, so, so all it's going to do is the, when you tap the button, it's going to toggle its uh, selected status on and off. Um, so that should work. So there is our button, button on, button off, just like that. Obviously, I'd want to probably uh, finesse that a little bit, make uh, you know, maybe change the background of the button. But you can see we've got the image there, super easy, um, just like that. Now, obviously, what I did there is I took the code, copied the code from Paint Code, pasted it into my app, and then I started to change it. And that's okay, that's fine. But the problem is you then have kind of broken your connection to to paint code, right? Because if you then want to go and change your art, you, you have to then make all those tweaks again. It's a bit annoying. So wouldn't it be great if you could actually, um, you could express those parameters, those parametric values you want to use in your image creation right there in paint code? I'm sure you're not surprised to hear that you can do that. So let's come back into paint code. Um, it's probably a good time to say, um, you might look at this and, and look at these tools up here and think, well, Obviously, paint code must be good for making quite simple shapes, stars and polygons and things. So I guess you could do some nice, simple, flat icons, but that, that might be all. Well, it's actually not the case at all. Let me show you a couple of examples. Let me show you an app by an outstanding developer that I know uh, named Adam. Adam Shaw. You guys know Adam, right? Sounded like uh, John Grubb when I said that, didn't I? You guys know Adam, right? Long-time friend of the show. Um, this is his... This is his wardrobe management app called Dressed. Um, if you are someone who has a very large wardrobe, uh, you can buy this uh, right now. Um, and uh, if you have a look at this uh, interface here, believe it or not, a lot of what you're seeing in this interface is created in paint code. Um, not the, the clothing, of course, those are photos that the user has inputted, but uh, the mannequin. Uh, and it's, uh, the mannequin actually has to hide and uh, show various parts of her body depending on what garments she's wearing. So um, that all happens dynamically. She sometimes blows a little kiss uh, to the... Or is it just me? Does she... <laughs> is that everyone? Oh. This is three just for me. If, if user equal James, yeah. Um, so the mannequin is, is, is generated in paint code. The background, all of this furniture. If you go to other parts of the interface, there is different furniture and nice parallax effect. All of that, uh, paint code code. Let me show you one more example. This is an app of mine. Um, one of my many breast-related apps on the App Store. Uh, this is an app for uh, nursing mothers. And I, yeah, it, 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 it looks better than it does on the screen, I trust, you, trust me. Um, but I have this, uh, this onboarding view, um, and this is actually an instance where I did use a custom view subclass because I use it a lot through the app. And, um, and so each one of these images is actually the same image, but I'm turning off and on or, or highlighting various parts of the graphic to highlight parts of my, uh, my interface. And uh, so, of course, I didn't um, create all of these graphics by hand in paint code. I mean, I suppose you could. Um, they're fairly basic shapes, but, but I didn't. And, of course, Adam certainly didn't um, 
I'm, I'm guessing, didn't draw this in, in paint code. Uh, fortunately, um, the guys at paint code recognized that, um, at, at pixel cut, I should say, realized that this is a basic, it's a good basic vector editing tool, but it's never going to be as fully featured as something like Illustrator or Sketch, right? But they recognize that, and they've done a great job at supporting importing. Um, so originally, you could only import from SVG, which was okay, but they just, in a recent update, you can import all of the things now. You can import from uh, Illustrator, from Sketch, from a PDF. Uh, you can even, and this is the best, you can just draw your art in your tool of choice, and you can copy and paste, just like that. So let's, uh, let's play with a few properties on this and, and, and change it around a bit. I'll just make this a, a bit of a bigger canvas, like that. And then let's center this. All right, so let's, let's make this sort of like an app icon kind of thing. Let's draw a square around it. Okay, and let's, uh, let's fill that with that, uh, oh, that's the, text color, that's not what we want, we want the fill color with icon color, we'll send it to the back, let's have, uh, let's have no stroke, and let's put a bit of a corner radius on that, 10, 20, yeah. so Obviously, if this is like, a, like an app icon kind of thing, usually the, the field for that would be some kind of gradient. So I want to show you some really cool things you can do with color. I love doing this. Um, so first of all, I, I don't like that blue. That's a horrible, nasty blue. Let's make that a bit more classy, something I don't know, like that. Um, so I'm going to create a gradient for that. But before I do that, I'm actually going to create, I'll get rid of that color. We don't need that. I'm going to create um, some... Uh, a color derived from selected color. So what this does is it starts with that base icon color I created earlier. I'm going to call this icon color dark. And it applies an operation. So I'm creating a dark color. I'm going to apply shadow. And you can see we can scale that from zero, in which case it's going to be exactly the same as the base color it's uh, based on, right up to 100. So I'm going to leave that at 50. I'm going to do the same thing again, create a, uh, a second one, and call that icon color light. And this time I'm going to apply, apply the highlight operation. Again, I could change that. I'll leave that about 50%. So I now have uh, two new colors based on the first color, and I'm going to use those to make a gradient. I'll call this icon gradient. So this stop is going to be uh, that one. This stop is going to be that one. And now I have a gradient. And so the cool thing is that if I now come in here and decide I now want green, Oh, sorry, I haven't actually applied it to the shape. Let's apply it. That's better. And so now if I change that, all of those derived colors scale with it, and I get an updated gradient. It's really nice. Let's do one more thing. Let's create one more derived color. Make this uh, highlight. I'll call it icon color very light. And I'm going to apply that to the fill, uh, sorry, the stroke of that. Uh, I need to just make that a bit fatter. To do is my stroke weight. About that. Right, so as I was saying, if I change that color now, everything updates together, which is really nice. So um, what else can you do? It's far more than just color. Let's uh, you see this pane down here called uh, variables. Um, you can do some really cool stuff in here. I'm going to create a number variable. Is that big enough to see? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to call this corner radius. Give it a sensible starting value, I suppose. And I'm going to apply this to, guess what, the corner radius. So the first thing that happened is now this method, this method uh, is now taking another parameter. It's taking a corner radius, and it's using that to apply to this shape. And I can drag up and down on this little uh, indicator here to actually see what's going to happen with various values that are being passed in. Now, just to be clear, as I'm dragging this, that's not changing my code in any way. This is just a little convenience to show you what to expect with values that are passed in. And it's, uh, it's lucky that I can do that, actually, because I've just noticed that as I'm uh, increasing my corner radius, I'm actually clipping that art. You know, even if it's not a circle or sort of at this kind of level, it just doesn't look balanced. That art kind of looks too, uh, too large. So let's fix that. Uh, let's create another variable. 
And I'm going to make this an expression variable. An expression variable uh, simply is a variable that can refer to other variables and create derived um, data. So I'll call this um, I'll call this the tool size and tool size. Doesn't matter, but let's be let's be correct. Tool size. So this is going to refer to the corner radius and make an adjustment to the size of that graphic, and uh, the adjustment is going to be this. So all this is is I observed that uh, once I get to 60, I'm a circle, right? So anything above 60, ignore it. So essentially, if the corner radius is zero, I want this image to be its full size. If uh, it gets up to 60 or above, then I want it to be 80% of its original size, and I just want it to scale nicely in between. So I'm going to apply that to the um, scale X of that shape, and also, of course, to the scale Y of that shape. Now, one little trap here. Um, you'll notice my shape moved. I need to... Yep, I need to move the, the center of the transformation. So I want that obviously in the center of my shape. And so now if I apply that, uh, no, I've already applied it, haven't I? So now if I adjust my corner radius, I should, there we go. All right, isn't that great? So now I pass in a single number to define the corner radius of my shape, and I know no matter what I pass in, I get a perfectly sized graphic. And I'm sure, like, this is a relatively simple use case, but just think of the possibilities of what you could do where you would need so many static assets to sort of get some of these effects or to cover yourself if you change your mind later on. You just have so much flexibility here. I'll show you one more thing, just using those colors that we created before. Let me just uh, duplicate that gradient, and I'll call this uh, icon gradient light. And I'll just, uh, I'll swap... I'll swap this one for uh, very light. So I've just got a, a lighter version of the gradient. And now, so let's say that this um, is like that star thing I used before. This is some kind of favorite indicator, and I want to turn it on and off. So I'm going to create a variable here, a Boolean, uh, and I'm going to call it favorite. And I'm not going to apply this to my shape directly. And you'll see that creating that didn't add it to my method here, because uh, it's not being used at the moment. Instead of applying it directly, I'm going to apply another expression variable. We'll call this, um, call this uh, rect color, rect fill. And I'm simply going to say, are we a favorite? If we are, then please give me icon gradient. If we're not, please give me icon gradient light. Okay. And I really like this. Um, you have this cool little uh, preview here. So if I flick favorite on and off, you can see instantly what you're going to get, All right, which is really handy. So I am just going to apply that to the fill of our rectangle. And now you see it's, now it's added that, that Boolean property to my method here. And uh, if I turn it on and off, I'll get my on and off art. Great. I'm just going to change the name of that canvas to uh, dev icon, like so. So that's great. Like lots of flexibility and, and, and cool things you can do there. Now, I could at this point, I could grab this code and um, copy it and paste it into my app like I was doing previously. But I want to come back to this idea of, uh, of, of not doing that. Um, I used paint code that way for a couple of years. Like I said, I, I wasn't a heavy user. I would just have these... Every now and then something would come up, and I'd think, that's a great use for, for paint code. So I'll go into paint code, I will create my shape or import my shape, and I'll get the code. Thank you very much, paint code. I'll take it from here you know, into Xcode, make my changes, tweak it, and off I would go. And that is OK, but of course the trouble is, if you want to make changes, you're really stuck. You, know, you can't go back to paint code because... Because paint code's like, oh, look at you, Mr. Fancy Xco, coming back for a change. <laughs> it literally, it, it does talk like that. But seriously, you know, it, it is a pain. Like, you have to, I, I kind of got clever about sort of compartmentalizing my changes so I could, you know, and, but it just, it wasn't ideal. It was a one-way trip. Uh, but the guys at Pixel Cut have made it increasingly 
compelling to not do that, but instead to actually make paint code a, a really sticky and an integrated part of your workflow. And the main thing that they've done to make that attractive is by adding these things called style kits. Uh, so style kit, you get that straight away whenever you start a new paint code project, but you don't have to use it, like I haven't been using it so far. Uh, but style kit is, at its simplest, just uh, a .m file and a .h file. Uh, I guess unless you're using Swift, what happens if you... I guess you'll just have one, right? Yeah. There you go, Sam. Yeah. Um, so uh, you get a dot .h file, dot .m file, and that includes all of those methods that you've created. Now, one thing you must do, uh, depending on how you're using these, is you need to define what kind of uh, method you're getting. So I want a drawing and an image method for both of these canvases. So they appear right here uh, in your code. Uh, along with any images that you've used. Of course, you know, you don't have to be using entirely vector assets. You can actually have bitmap images which are incorporated in this and they can move around and do things. So they would be there and, you know, you could refer to them in your, in your, um, in your app. And, of course, you can change your, you can add your colors into that. And then you can access those colors directly in, uh, in your header there. So that's just a really handy way of just encapsulating all of that sort of styling logic. So how do you get that into your app? You simply uh, give it a name. I'll call it Demo Style Kit. Export it. Uh, yes, that's where I want it to go. And now back in my app, I'm simply going to add them in. So now here, all I need to do is import it. style kit, and I can use anything that's declared uh, in that style kit uh, right through my app. So I'm just going to create a different button, just a basic, uh, a basic button, uh, like a whole, whole image for the button, and I just need these on and off image, right? So I'm going to call uh, demo style kit image of dev icon corner radius 40, favorite, uh, this is the off image, so favorite no, and this one would be favorite yes, build and run it, whoa, that's interesting, Did I, I must have accidentally applied uh, the fill to the but this is a great uh, way of showing you how simple this is. Like, imagine if you, I mean, you wouldn't make this mistake, you wouldn't export images with things hooked up incorrectly. But let's say you realize, you know, you've made a mistake. How easy is it to go back to paint code, to go into your thing here, and so what have I done here? Have I connected rect fill to that? Uh, I've got the scale. I'm not actually sure what I've done there. But let's say, for instance, uh, icon color light. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes, there you go. Well done. Uh, so I actually, of course, wanted to make that 80%. Right. And that's why I was thinking that looked kind of, that didn't look the way I expected to. So now I've made that fix, right? I've gone to one of my clever developer slash designers in my team, and she's pointed out the error of my ways. I've come into paint code, made that one simple quick change, command R. Right? Command R. Back to my project, I don't have to re-import anything, I don't have to deal with any files, build and run, and I should have that fixed. All right? How easy is that? Client calls me up and says, you know what, that aqua color, that's really, really lame. Back in here, you know, he wants red all of a sudden, all right? Okay, let's make that red. Again, command R, back in here, build and run, and we get the, the red graphic. Just so, so quick. Think about the time saving, especially once you start dealing with more complex graphics. It's just wonderful. Uh, it just gives me such a kick. If I just need to make a new icon that's very similar to another icon, duplicate that canvas. I'm running out of space here. Duplicate the canvas, change the art. Let's just make that a star. Uh, no, make this like a pointy kind of guy. Uh, let's fill it with like so, give it a new name, 
pointy icon. Again, Command R, and without doing a single thing, I just have access now to image of pointy icon with those parameters, right? So, so easy. It's just amazing. Um, how are we doing for time? We're doing well. I have got one more thing I want to show you. One more thing. It wouldn't be a dev world demo uh, without at least one anvil animation. So uh, let's make an anvil animation. Okay. Oh, uh, real trap there. I just had that um, canvas selected when I did the import, and so you'll see what it actually did is it put my... Um, anvil over the top of my pointy icon, which is, you don't want anvils on your pointy icons. That is a recipe for disaster, let me tell you. I've been there and done that. Uh, let's try that again. Okay, that's what we want. All right, so uh, anvil. Let's just call it anvil. And uh, just bear with me while I just set up a couple of things here. So uh, I'm going to duplicate this, uh, this rect fill, and I'm just going to flip it around. I'm going to call that, uh, I'll just leave it that, and I'm just going to flip it so that that is the opposite gradient to that one. All right, now I'm going to apply that to one of these starburst shapes, and I'm going to apply that one to the other one. Cool. Now I'm going to get my hammer here, and I'm going to remember to change the transform point down here, and I'm going to create a new variable, uh, just a number called rotation. Start off at zero and apply that to the rotation of the hammer. Okay, so that's great. Again, command R back into my app. All right, so let's get rid of this and let's just one more time hear this lovely noise. Cool. Okay, so we've got one problem here. Let's have a look here. Draw anvil with... Oh, that's because I neglected to make sure we had an image method. Again, Command R, and that error message should just disappear. All right, so all I'm doing here is I've created an image view, and I've just created this little recursive function that... Um, that redraws the image into that image view. So I've got this uh, rotation value, um, and I'm just incrementing that up to 60, down to zero, up to 60, down to zero, and just passing it back at 60 frames per second. And so, yeah, drum roll please, if I have done everything correctly. Dun, 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 dun. Hey! Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Pan code, I love it. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Uh, can you sample out something like a, a button or a switch in iOS and then try and replace the graphics or the way that it works like that with pen code? Can you? Uh, it's not something I've tried. Anyone tried that? Can you swap the screen around? Swap it like... It's like they're not seeing like That's hurting you? Oh, sorry. I, sh I, sh I should have had an epilep uh, epilepsy warning here. Let's just kill that. Well, well, I believe that in that example they are, it's not even a button though, they are creating a graphic that, resp yeah, so you could, yeah, so you could recreate a, a whole button and, you know, implement touches, you know, received and, and flip around the graphic and you could do the same with the UI switch, you could even have it so the switch animates, not really sure why you'd do that, but in terms of actually subclassing a button and, getting into the guts of it and, and doing the, the image that deep. I mean, I'm, sure, I'm absolutely sure you could. I'm absolutely sure I couldn't. Um, but let me know how you get on. Yeah. Um, does it support IV inspectable and IV designable? Yeah, 100%. Cool. Yeah, so, um, so for instance, uh, all, everything I showed you, I was just drawing views programmatically in, um, 
in, in, in the view controller, but you could um, have a storyboard and you could draw your custom view in there and you could set up an IB inspectable and have it appear exactly as it's going to appear. Um, you could set it so that you've got the parameters there and you can change them right there in the storyboard and you could see it update. I've never done that. Uh, don't have time, but um, if you had something that was really complex and you were really passionate about getting that just exactly so, that would be a really cool thing to do. Yes? Um, I'm not sure how you would get on um, actually having that interact directly with, you know, with the paint code code. Um, I mean, obviously, you, you've got a, you've got a way of having a view that can draw itself with code in itself, and you've got, of course, ways of as I'm doing here is kind of a bit of a naff way of doing it, really, but just creating a whole series of images and and then deciding what you're going to do with them. So I suppose you would be more likely to just either get an array of images that you need to use for that or just have your view set up to handle that and to handle that kind of externally to paint code. But that's a good example of tweaks that you can make that don't then break that workflow because paint code doesn't know about what you're doing there. If you go and change that art, it's not going to break the things you're doing. But I guess that's probably the way you would do it, unless anyone has tried it differently. Any other questions? Yes? Um, when you had Pinko, you did that because one, you were going to show us how we can eat Ah, oh, we've got time actually. <laughs> I, d I didn't. I didn't plant that question. I, I had it ready, and I just thought, you know, maybe if uh, you play with it, it's pretty awesome, eh? I haven't yet. I oh, okay. I want to download Beta with um, my live project, but it, uh, it does seem really, really cool. All right. Well, because you asked, because you, and because you all sat very nicely and um, <laughs> and, and, and applauded at the right places and said ooh and ah. Um, let's show you telekinesis. This is a beta feature that uh, um, that they are working on. So I need to open. That. Actually, I don't think I need to. I think I just need to run the app. By Anvil Telekinesis. Mm, actually, I think I probably do need to run it. Do, do, do. So if I come back into the beta version of uh, Paint Code and connect to my simulator, uh, so you have to be, this works in the simulator or on a device. Um, you, you, uh, but if it's on a device, you do need to be on the same Wi-Fi network as the device, so don't get all carried away with the idea of sending this to clients and they can call you and tell you what to change and you can do it on the fly. Initially, I thought that was like, that would be amazing. Client calls up and says, hey, you know, can you make them less pointy? And I go, hold on a second, just give it, just uh, open it again. But no, that's not going to work. But watch this. So this is obviously a compiled app. This is running in the simulator. You could do it on the device. Boom. What the? I'm glad I did this now. Actually, that's uh, yeah. I'm responsible for this. I I I, I, I talk. I, I discuss with them how to do this. Show them how to. No, it's not. Uh, but yeah, you can change whatever you want. And basically, what it is doing uh, is it's regenerating the uh, the style kit. You have to use style kit. It's regenerating the style kit on the fly and and re bring it back. And you do um, usually when you're using paint code, you don't need to import any frameworks or anything whatsoever. You just import the code or the HM files. If you're using telekinesis, you need a framework, and they warn you don't try and put this into a shipping app <laughs> for fairly obvious reasons. Hey, that's been great. Let's give away this uh, this, this this free app before we go. Uh, my question is. The company that makes paint code, where are they based? Whoa, bam. Very good. Thank you very much.